Hi guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today we'll be taking a look at Ambrosus, a decentralized IoT network for the next generation supply chain. Before you dish it off as just another supply chain project, Ambrosus is currently in discussion with Nestle, the food and beverage giant, for a potential partnership. So it's definitely a project worth knowing about. To learn more about Ambrosus, keep watching this video. Ambrosus is a blockchain supply solution, like Walton Chain or VChain or Wabi or TE Food. Ambrosus offers both hardware and software to monitor and track the location and condition of products from the farms all the way to the consumers. Unlike VChain and Walton Chain, it doesn't just focus on retail, but it rather focuses on four specific industries, food, medicine, commodities, and high-value products. These four industries were chosen specifically because these are industries that are in dire need of a good supply chain solution. Currently, up to 35% of fruits and vegetables are lost during the transport phase. A study published in the Food Journal estimates that food safety incidents cost the US economy alone $7 billion annually. Regarding medicines, 10% of the world's prescription drugs are counterfeit and are responsible for 1 million deaths per year. This is according to Interpol. The World Customs Organization estimates that the counterfeit drug market is worth $220 billion. According to the World Health Organization, counterfeit pneumonia and malaria medicines alone cause more than 200,000 deaths every year. High-value items like aviation and electronic parts, along with short-run valuables like precious stones and jewelry, traditionally use serial numbers, barcodes or holographic stickers to trace their products. But serial numbers and barcodes can be damaged and stickers can be temperate or counterfeit. A 2013 Boston Consulting Group found that 90% of executives view commodity hedging as a key competitive advantage but yet less than a third of them believe they are implementing best-in-class hedging practice. So measuring performance and data for different commodities to improve operations is one of the biggest supply chain challenges. Now why blockchain? Can't you do a good supply chain solution without blockchain? Not really actually. The decentralized nature of blockchain is the most tamper-proof solution to counterfeits. And furthermore, tracking the flow of goods from hundreds of suppliers to hundreds of producers, distributors, retailers, and customers becomes extremely messy. But smart contracts in blockchain help to streamline the entire process to make it clean and simple. For this reason, supply chain solutions are fast becoming one of the main areas of mass adoptions for blockchain technology and I personally think that over the next couple of years, projects in this area will boom massively. Furthermore, unlike protocols, the blockchain projects of supply chain arena are still very small in market cap and are currently, I think, a very good investment entry point. I mean, look at Ambrosus or Wabi or Tfood, even Walter Chain. They are all very undervalued and cheap projects to get into right now. And the last thing which I can't resist saying is supply chain blockchain projects generally tend to produce their own hardware for tracking. With the exception of VChain who buys its hardware, most of the others actually manufacture their own hardware for tracking purposes and I think that any good hardware really gives a project a lot of value and longevity in the market. So with that in mind, let's now look at the technology of Ambrosus in details. And there are four aspects to Ambrosus technology. If you understand these four aspects, you would understand Ambrosus as a project. The first is their sensor system. So this is the hardware of Ambrosus. Ambrosus probably has the most sensitive sensor among all the supply chain projects that, and their sensor can be set or tailored to measure very sensitive details during the transportation phase. For example, if they are transporting milk, they can measure the temperature, the fat and the lactose content of the milk. If they are transporting pharmaceutical products, they can measure the temperature, the humidity and even the sunlight or fluorescent light content on the product. It can work by ultrasound sensor, so it's a non-invasive sensor and the whole technology is really very impressive. Now, apparently, INS Ecosystem, which is a different supply chain um, project, will be using their sensors. So their hardware sensor is a hardware that can be adopted by other supply chain projects as well. 
Other hardwares that they plan to release in the future will include food grade tracers and reusable connectors. And something that makes them different from other projects in the blockchain at the moment, like Walton Chain, is the fact that their future connectors and sensors will be able to link information with legacy systems like SAP or Oracle. So like currently at the moment, Walton Chain, for example, makes its own custom RFID chips. And the RFID chips connect directly to the blockchain. And browser sensors cannot connect directly to the blockchain. They need a connector, but they can connect to legacy systems as well as blockchain, which will allow their technology easier to be mass adopted. But it will also mean that their hardware will be more attractive to non-blockchain supply chain solutions, meaning that a non-blockchain supply chain solution can actually buy their sensors and use it for their own system as well. The next key feature for this project is their blockchain protocol. Ambrosus will use not one, but two different blockchains. It will use the Ethereum blockchain as the public ledger, and the Ethereum blockchain will also host their Ember tokens, and this is what is responsible for all the smart contracts that are running all the transactions. Ethereum is good as a transaction source and ledger, but it is not good as a data library. It's not good for storing information. So for that purpose, Ambrosus will be using a separate private blockchain and utilizing what is known as a Merkle tree technology to store data. A Merkle tree technology, for those of you who are not familiar, in very simple terms, is spreading the data out like a tree and its branches, but you can confirm the validity of each branch by simply examining the root of the tree. So it's a much simpler way of um, validating data. The Embracer's protocol will also have master nodes, and initially these master nodes will be industrially run, but the plan is much later on to open the master nodes up to the public to own one as well. Uh, much details of this is not known yet. The next key feature is their data storage, which we kind of touched on a little bit already. But coming back to this diagram, Ambrosus will be using a three-layer architecture to store data. The first layer is a library that will be used to store large quantities of small data with the blockchain and distributed file systems. The second layer is dedicated to storing data from the supply chains. And the top layer, which you see here is Ambrosus.js, is a specific protocol that is dedicated to food and pharmaceutical supply chains only with very specific types of measurements and requirements and data that is related to those industries. The last of their core features is their developer tools. So Ambrosus will be open source for developers to build their dApps on Ambrosus, and these dApps will be compiled into a portfolio for consumers and enterprises to choose from. So the best dApps will receive a bounty, but presumably as well that the dApps, when the dApps are chosen to be used by the consumers and enterprises, the developer will get a reward for the dApp being used. Ambrosus recently announced their beta release 0.95. So officially, they are now open source and developers can start building on them. Compared to the other supply chain projects that are in the space, example Walton Chain or VChain, Ambrosus is still considered a very new project. So as with all new projects, it is good to see that the technology is making good progress and open for public inspection and use. So tech-wise, I think that Ambrosus is a solid project. Their website also has a couple of pages for support and recognition. And to be honest, even though there's a lot of names here, it's not very impressive because every link on this page is broken and every link just directs you back to the Ambrosus homepage. They have a second page for support and recognition in media. And again, if you click on each link, this is not as impressive as it looks because it looks like there's a lot of names. The links for most of these articles are not necessarily relevant to the project and a lot of them are actually from the majority of them go date back to July and August of last year. Okay, one of the articles that wasn't relevant is the link that goes to routers. Now I was very excited about this because routers is a reputable media source. So I was excited to see what routers had written on them. But actually the article itself is a very short article that the CEO of Ambrosus wrote on supply chain and he was writing it for routers so it wasn't routers writing about the project he was the ceo writing an article for routers and the article that he wrote was just a short generic article about supply chain and it doesn't actually mention 
uh, embraces or promote embraces in any way. So I thought it was a bit misleading to put it up there. This is their team. As you can see, it's a huge team, but it's also a team with a very impressive resume. The team is actually one of my favorite points about this project. Now, recently, they changed their chief marketing officer, their CMO, to a guy by the name of Stephen Conchota. Stephen Conchota has served twice as the chief marketing officer of Versace. He has also held senior global marketing and executive roles at Warner Brothers, Sony Pictures TVs, Cartoon Network, and Escada. So that's pretty wow. Now, I've never actually seen a CMO with a super impressive resume in the blockchain scene until this. Usually, it's just the CEO and CTO who carries the team by the resume, but in this case, Stephen Conchota's experience in marketing is so huge, I wouldn't be surprised if he carried the team to great heights in the near future. Everyone is expecting big things from him. Their CEO is no pushover either. Their CEO is Angel Facetti, and he previously worked at the UN, World Resources Forum, Bloomberg, and he was also trained at Google. At the UN, he was the youngest project leader and the lead published author. He's also a recognized expert and frequent speaker on innovation, technology, and economic development. Their CTO is Dr. Stephen Mayer, who has over 20 years of R&D experience in food analysis, ultrasound sensors, and data encryption. He previously led the R&D projects at Nestle, MPFN, Microtechnic, and Vitergen Biotech, and he also sold two projects to the Musk Group and the Peron. He was the founding manager director of the Integrative Food and Nutrition Center at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. He holds a PhD in food science, specifically in ultrasound applications in food industries, and he's also a member of the Swiss Federal Office for Agriculture. So, wow, you know, you can go through the rest of the resumes in your own time, but I assure you this is a very impressive team. These are the advisors. It's also a very impressive list. First of all, you have Parity, which is led by the Ethereum co-founder, Dr. Gavin Wood. And Parity is the technical advisor to the project. There is also Oliver Basman, who is the president of Crypto Valley Association, and he's also the founder of Basman Advisory. He's also the previous CIO at UBS and the CIO at SAP, which is, you know, SAP is huge, and the CIO at Alliance North America and Mexico, in addition to executive roles at IBM. He was also previously named the COO and the CTO of the year by Wall Street Journal and the European CIO of the year by CONET. And he was twice included in the financial news in the FinTech 40 list of innovators shaping the future of finance. So this guy is super heavyweight. There is also Dr. Fabiola Dionis, who is Nestle's global R&D program leader since 2014. And the rest of the advisors are also very impressive. So this is, I mean, is heavyweight, right? This is a heavyweight resume team. And overall, this project resume really inspires a lot of confidence that the project is going to succeed. For me personally, actually, the vision of the tech and the tech of this project is good, but it's the team's resume that really uh, assures me that they are not going to fail, but they're going to succeed. Now, one thing I do need to point out here is that the project, as far as I know, they have no partners or users that are committed to using their product. Okay, There is no partners listed on their website and I ask in, through their various social medias and no one has answered. So to the best of my research, looking and reading around, right now there is no one who has signed up to use their product. The reason for this, I believe, is due to the fact that they don't actually have a product yet. Now, the roadmap is not on their website. Their roadmap is actually a Medium article on their blog. And as you can see, it is only in 2019 that they aim to transform their IoT sensor into ready-use products. And it doesn't even say which part of 2019, the start or the end, we don't know. So where other projects like Wabi, T-Food, Walton Chain, and VChain are already up and running, these guys are still developing their tech and rather in how is it really quite early in the stage of developing their tech? Now, in the big scheme of things, when we look at this 10 years from now, they are probably still very early into the blockchain supply chain scene. But right now, they are quite underdeveloped, and I'm thinking that's why they don't have any partners. Because if you don't have any working products, how can you get any partners to use your products? 
But this is where the risk with early projects come in. You have no guarantee it will work and attract users and partners in the future because nothing is guaranteed in life. The project is quite cheap at the moment and if they achieve what they say they will, it's going to be very high returns. So as an investment, they are higher risk than most other projects who already have working products and partners. I mean, if I was to give you just one example, TE Food, which we reviewed recently, already has over 6,000 partners. So that's the kind of difference that I'm saying is hard to ignore. Now, Ambrosus is a good project. They have a great team and they are already in discussions with Nestle. And given that their CTO is from Nestle and their advisor is also Nestle's global R&D program leader, it's quite believable that they will have a partnership with Nestle in the near future. And that will be massive news. But until it actually happens, it's always a maybe. So this is a project that has higher risk for higher gains. So you decide what kind of investor you are. One last consideration I wanted to mention about the project is about their hardware sensor being able to be used by other projects. Now, whilst this may sound really good, I think that potentially it's a double-edged one. Because on one hand, it means that the company and their technology can achieve widespread use quickly. In fact, the company might even become rich just by selling their sensors because it's, as far as I know, the best sensor out there. However, as a token investor, what you want is for token use and demand for the token price to rise. If the feature technology can be outsourced to other projects and given to other projects, then there is no token use uh, kind of pack to that technology. In fact, the other project who's using their sensors might do better and then the tokens of the other project become more in demand. Does that kind of make sense? So the fact that their hardware is being used by others will definitely mean that Ambrose's project uh, will be successful and the company will earn lots of money. But this does not necessarily mean that the token price will go up. Now, I like this project a lot. I just want to mention this because I think it's something that token investors in this project should pay attention to moving forward. Finally, coming to look at the pricing. Right now, their market cap is sitting at 56 million and 56 million is a small market cap for current blockchain projects. VChain, the biggest supply chain project, is sitting at 1.9 billion. So if Ambrose has ever got there, that will be 35 to 40 X gain. Is it possible for Ambrose to catch up to that kind of market cap? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think that supply chain blockchain projects is an uh, industry that's going to be simply huge. And the whole industry is going to grow and grow over the next couple of years. And all the current good supply uh, chain projects, including Ambroso, have all, all of them have a chance to hit VeChain's current market cap, which by the way, is VeChain's market cap in a bear market, and that's not even the peak of VeChain. Also, I feel that Ambrosos as a project has always been somewhat flying under the radar. Back in the ICO days, they aimed for a hard cap of over 100 million, which was a bit ambitious, and they only achieved to raise uh, 38 million. Now, 38 million for an ICO is a good amount, even by today's standard. But it was a little bit embarrassing for them given how high they pitched. But I think that it reflected that they didn't have the FOMO and the popularity that they thought they had. But I think that the recent change in their CMO, their chief marketing officer, is going to do something to that. I think it's going to make a big difference. I definitely am going to watch this space closely because I think that if he can do something to hype Ambrosos up and start a FOMO, which is what the whole market currently is driven by, unfortunately, then this project could potentially be huge in the very near future over the next few months. There are also potential big news like potential Nestle partnerships uh, that we are waiting to come up to hear from. And if that was to happen, that would definitely give a big boost to the price. The only thing is that we have no idea when that announcement might be because it's still quite a while away before this project will be up and running. So in conclusion, it's a higher risk project for higher gains, but it is a very promising project in a promising industry with a good team behind it. and. Any trade into this project is probably going to be a huddle, not a swing trade. So that's my thoughts on Ambrosus, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think of Ambrosus, especially if you support the project. Let us know why you like this project and why you support it. If you found this video helpful, do give me that like and subscribe. It really helps me to build this channel. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care and we will catch you guys again very soon.